everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really pretty gift bag. I'm so pleased with how this one turned out and the idea to make this actually came from these curtain rings here. So I will talk through in more detail about those in a moment when I show you all the products I've used. But this measures eight and a half by three by five and a half. So it's a really nice size. You've got this beautiful kind of wrapped pattern paper that goes right over. And then I've sealed it at the bottom with Velcro. My Velcro dots are super strong, so I've just put two here, and then you can see them at the top. Then you open it up. Now, this I have constructed it, I cut one side off by accident and realised I shouldn't have cut them off. I will be doing the next one with these side pieces on, but it still works and I will still use this. And then that will close like so. But as you can see, mine pops up because I don't have the side pieces. But like I said, we will do them in the next one. You've got so much space in this and if you do want to put something heavy then just reinforce the base of this with some you know grey board or something like that but because I've got the velcro you can actually afford to put something relatively weighty in this because although these are attached here I have used a strong glue and you know they're going to take some force to come off but that will take you know some kind of weight but if you do have something very very strong then I would advise that you attach these to the side here and that takes all the weight rather than this kind of I guess the cover but yeah let me show you how to make it okay so these are the curtain rings and I purchased these from a charity shop now they will come, some do, not all, but they will come with this kind of plastic in the middle. Now I'm sure a lot of you have got these lying around in drawers. I know I used to have lots of these kind of like in that kitchen drawer where you kind of throw everything. But also wooden ones as well, but the problem with the wooden ones is they are very, very thick. So you would just need more kind of paper to attach them. But that's how they tend to come and then you just literally just pop that middle section out. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this yet. I'm sure something will come up along the way, so I'm going to keep them all in there together. But these are the two that I'm going to use today. Now the measurements for these particular ones are, it's, well it's coming in about one and a half in diameter, but you know if it's bigger or small it doesn't really matter. But um, yeah they were a pound for all of those and I thought they're going to be perfect for gift bag, you know, kind of embellishments, you know, the hardware side of things. So yeah, if you've got any lying around or you can easily pick these up, I know um, in the UK Wilkinson's we have a lot of them and I know places like the range and stuff you'll be able to buy them as well so yeah have a little look and then I don't know why that's not going on oh there we go then I'm using these butterflies and I've already done this piece here this dye is an old one it's a Gina Marie dye um, I will try and link it if I can find one but any kind of you know topper as such will work but I love these I picked them up from the works and I did share that in one of my what did I get and I've just put one on top of there as well so at least I've always got one to look at once they've all gone okay so you've got your two rings there, I've got my velcro dots there, these are the dot and dab range, so again I'll link them in if I can find them, but they are the 20mm, but again, any kind of velcro, but you, you do want something quite, I guess, larger, just so it holds whatever you've got inside. So you want two pieces of 12 by 12 cardstock, and we'll get straight into the scoring. So you're going to score at half an inch, and nine inches, okay. Then rotate it and you're going to score it three inches again. Then you're going to score it eight and a half inches and at eleven and a half. Okay, so you want to do that twice. Then you will also need a piece of pattern paper that's eight and a half by twelve. So I just cut down one of my twelve by twelve pattern papers. Now the pattern paper I'm using today is from this pack here it's the paper tree collection it's a touch of romance i've shared this one before and this is the paper that i used to make that large tote gift bag which many of you have liked i will link that one up here so you can see but yeah again i'll link all of this in because it's a beautiful really lovely paper and it's 160 gsm so it is it's, it's just kind of works really well it's easy to move and stuff and fold although we won't be folding this one but beautiful pattern and I just thought this butterfly and everything just really works really well together and I love that these are 3d they've got foam adhesive but you can also lift them up like that so that's what you need there then you will also need a piece of two by eight and a half and along the two inch side you just want to score at one inch and fold in half and this is purely decorative but it does help because this is a, a thinner paper by adding that along the bottom it does just give it a little bit of just I guess weight to really kind of you know hold it there and attach it to the, the velcro it just makes it a bit easier to kind of um, lift up so that's that piece and then you want two pieces of half an inch 
by one and a half and this is what I'm going to use to attach my rings okay but again that size is entirely up to you it will depend on you know if you've got something that you intend to put in it then I would say if it's something heavy then you would want to make that bigger and I'd also say to in terms to reinforce this up here pop some brads through it as well because that'll just hold it down as well okay so all the scoring's done so now you just want to go along and fold and burnish all the score lines on both pieces okay so you will have two pieces like this now you want to have it so that you have the half inch piece here on the left hand side and the other half inch piece on the top okay because that is going to be the kind of lip to fold and close that top part of the gift box inside and this is going to act as a hinge to actually stick these two pieces together so with it in that orientation we need to do a bit of cutting now the cuts that I'm going to do first will be the same on both pieces okay so we'll do them because there's one the front piece will be slightly different to the back piece so I'm going to say that this is my front piece and you just want to from the bottom here so where we've got this half inch strip you'll see you've got a score line there and then you've got a score line there and then that score line there we're going to just cut this section out here because we want to create that hinge so I'm just going to cut nice and neatly up there and remove that piece completely and then just take a little wedge out of there a bit better there we go all right so back to that way again and then we're going to go along to this one here and cut up so this is our base that we're cutting at the moment like so and then if you just fold that piece up with this piece here you just want to cut some nice wedges off of the sides because that's going to fold inside the gift box or gift bag so we don't want them sticking out like so okay so I'm going to do that the same with this piece okay so that's where you should be at now with both pieces then we want to turn this one here so again we've got that one where we've already cut into it and you're going to just cut across that one there because you should have another score line there just cut up to that one turn it around again and cut from the top all the way down to join that so what we've now done is created this hinge on its own so if I then just take another little wedge off of that one get that one out of the way and turn it back now we've created this hinge so again I'm going to do that one with this piece here okay so now with one of them so this one that I've got in my hand I'm going to have as my back piece so that's how we started off with the hinge on our left hand side flip the whole thing around so you've got that this half inch piece now facing you and what we're going to do for this one is just cut up that score line to the first score line like so and then remove this little piece on the top and this is going to be one of the sides that we fold in which is what I cut away when I first made it and then I thought no I shouldn't have done that now what I would say and as I've said again for lots of you that follow me regularly whenever you do one of these boxes where you're kind of locking in the top you just want to take a very very small amount so not like these where I cut those big wedges you want to just go almost like just a little slither because what you want to do is you want to create a lock so that when these are folded in when this piece slots in it, it kind of jams in between the paper that's why mine pops out because it's got nothing to actually kind of yeah sit against so you can see there I'm just cutting some very small amounts off there like so and then with this top piece now again just cut very very small little wedges off because what you can do is if it doesn't go in when we go to put it together you can always cut a little bit more away so if you don't want to cut anything at this point don't wait till you put it all together okay so that is going to be our back so if you kind of imagine now if I fold that one in that's going to then fold in that's going to lock down and that's the lid okay so with this next piece we've got our hinge again on the left hand side what we're going to do is rather than keep this big piece is we're going to remove this whole piece and just leave this one because that is going to act as the other side piece that folds in okay so again I'm going to flip this whole thing around and we're going to cut down that's one score line that you will have it's actually it's not down to the first it's down to the second because if you think about it we've got that score line so anyway you're cutting it down to this one here then with this piece you want to take off this top piece again like we did before but now we're going to remove this whole section here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring in 
my longer scissors just because you get a really nice finish with these. And I'm just going to cut really neatly along the top. And this side is going to act as the front of our gift box. Okay, and again with this piece, you just want to take a very, very small slither. Again, if it doesn't close, we can't get that piece on, we can always cut into it a little bit more. So it's always best to, yeah, either leave it if you want to wait till it's all together. We'll do what I'm doing and just take a little bit off. That's all I'm going to do for the minute. Okay, so what you should have now is one piece that looks like this, okay, and another piece that looks like this. So we've got this piece in here. Both should have this hinge on the left hand side. Okay, so next we can start putting this together. So I'm going to add some of my glue on here. I'm using the Gina K Connect. I've, I have done a review on all the different glues. Um, and this one is a strong glue. Right, I'm just going to run a thin amount. You never need a lot of glue. It's always best to go lighter than heavier. I think this is blocked. So that tab's on the left hand side. This next piece, the tab has to be on the left hand side and it's this flat piece here that we're going to stick. So you just want to, I always say, make sure you get your base score line lined up like so, because you can always kind of like fix the top, you know, cut into it a little bit more if need be. Let's move that out of the way. Whereas once you've done the bottom, you can't really do much about that. So always make sure that that score line is nice and lined up. Stick all that down. Flip the whole thing over, fold this one, and again, you're going to add some glue. Oh, this is really frustrating me. This is why I hate all these precision nib things. I've got my Kalel glue, so I think I'm going to end up using that because it irritates me. So I'm going to bring this one in, and I'm just going to run again. Not much. Just want to make sure you get it right to the corners there. And then what you should be able to do is just fold that one over and it all line up. Perfectly. Again, just focusing, making sure that your bottom score line is bang on. Otherwise, you can have a wonky box and it's going to wobble, <laughs> like one of those annoying ch tables when you're in a restaurant. And the whole thing should lie nice and flat, okay? And that will be a sign that it's all lined up nicely as well. Okay, now I know some people like to keep their boxes so they can fold them flat and store them. If that is the case, then you don't want to go sticking your base down now like I'm going to do. Okay, but next, so flip it over and you want this piece with this hinge here or facing towards the back because this is the front. Turn it upside down and I'm going to fold that back one down first, like so. I'm going to add some glue onto this piece here, stick that one down. And then again with this one. And then once you've done both your sides, you just do that last piece and fold that over. And again, just make sure everything's lined up. But because you cut all the little wedges off the side, you shouldn't have anything overhanging. You can see mine there. Turn it over ooh, and then just open this all up. And you can just go in there and just add some pressure just to make sure that glue is nicely spread out. Okay, and then with this now, if you fold it in, you should have just a little bit of kind of room there. If you bring this over, it should lock in and that's what you want it to do. Now, if it doesn't, like I said, I would rather mine be tighter than loose. Can you see now, that's what I want. That all, it won't come out, it doesn't pop out and it's a much nicer finish when you have your side pieces to fold in rather than cut them away like I did. See, I've got that gap and obviously this pops out but it's fine because when this is closed, it does hold it down. So, like I said, this is perfect. I can still give that to someone. They're not going to... It's only us box makers that notice all those things, I think. So that is now a really nice box. So that on its own is a, is a tutorial because you can just add some nice mats onto this. You could put a nice floral topper. You could have some card coming over this to kind of close it up. It's, yeah, it's really, really handy. So that's just a nice size gift box. Next, we want to make this look pretty. So I've got this lovely... Do I just, again, I love watercolour images. So this has just got that nice watercolour finish to it and it's just gorgeous. So with this piece... This is when we bring this section here and if you've got a directional paper then you want to make sure that it's facing up the right way and you're going to attach this to the bottom like this. Okay, now obviously my paper is non-directional so it doesn't matter which end I use this but I'm going to just add some glue on one side first. You can add it to both if you want but I'm just going to do it on one and then just 
sit that piece over the top just gives you again that wiggle room. If you don't have liquid glue you can just use some tape, that's absolutely fine. And then again I'm just going to add some along here and fold that one over. Okay so that's that piece now all ready. Next we're going to bring our box in again and I'm going to get my velcro dots and I'm just going to pair them up, do that one as well, get them all ready. Like I said, these are super strong, so it's quite a delicate little box, so whether they're the right ones to use, and maybe smaller would be better, but hey, they're fine, at least nothing's going to come out of this. So stick those down, and then line this up so that this runs completely flush with the bottom of your gift box, like so. And what you can do is flip that over, open it up, and if you go inside and push down on the Velcro, if you want to use magnets, you can. But again, with the magnets, I would say if you've got something heavy in, those magnets will probably slide off. It's going to take a lot to pull that Velcro off. So that's why, yeah. And Velcro is my preferred kind of fastening to use anyway. Now you want to wrap that around and it's up to you really how big you want your arch to be. You could have it all the way up here and just glue that little bit down if you wanted to. You can see how it's going to look. But I've gone quite far really, so that is entirely up to you. But what I would say, the easiest way to know where you want to glue is decide where you want it to go. So I'm going to go about there and then I'm just going to grab a pencil and I'm just going to mark a little pencil mark just inside there. And then what you can do is open up the whole thing measure that pencil mark so mine is two and seven eighths and then come along this side here and just mark two and seven eighths like so and then draw a very faint line and I will cover this when I stick it down like so now I know that that's where I want to add all of my glue now also I would say is if you're going to do anything with the handle, you may want to do that while this is still kind of free, because this is where you'll kind of handle bits. So if you're going to add brads and stuff, or if you want to maybe add some hole punches instead and you want to thread ribbon round, you might not have these. So what you can also do is add a hole punch here and here whilst it's like this and thread your ribbon right underneath and bring it out both sides and then have it as a handle like that. So just think about what it is that you want to use in case you don't have something similar to what I've got and yeah, get that sorted first because it's just going to be easier. Although you can obviously just undo the, the Velcro as well, but whilst it's uh, completely detached, I guess. So now I'm just going to add my glue all along this. And then I can see underneath here where that pencil line is and also keep everything perfectly lined up. Bring that round. Okay, and again, what you can now do is carefully open the Velcro there, open this up. You can go in there and push that all down. Now, if you want to decorate all on this as well, you can. There's so much space to really, you know, add your, add your touch to it. And there you have it. Now you could leave it like that. If you want to keep it more as a clutch style, you can by all means, because look, once that's on there, oh, how gorgeous does that look? In fact, I'm going to stick that down now because I just absolutely love this. And I just love those butterflies. Like I said, they match perfectly with this. So it's always nice when you can, yeah, mix and match things. So again, up to you where you want to add your topper. You might have a sentiment here. You might have maybe a gift tag. It's entirely up to you. But you would think, I think, you'd think they're part of this collection, but they're not. <laughs> and they were a pound, I think, for all of those. So I will, like I said, hopefully they'll still be online or in the stores. I know many of you do go visit. Right, so that is that piece now done. Obviously, if you've done hole punches here, you'll be able to thread your ribbon through. But now I have these pieces here. And basically what's going to happen is that's going to stick on like this okay so what I would say first of all is you want to kind of work out where you have them now uh, it's just under one and a half but the, the, the main bit you want to get right really is making sure that you have it right on the top of this arched section here okay so you can see there mine are pretty I'm happy with that if I put it on the side you can see it's maybe towards the back slightly but 
yeah, as long as you get it as close to that as possible. So I'm going to go back to this glue because I did like this. Like I said, it is super strong and it dries pretty fast. So I'm just going to pop a little bit here and here. And then I'm going to pop this through. It's a little bit fiddly, but I think worth it. And then I'm going to, because I've got a little bit of wiggle room, just check that that one is where I want it to be. And I can just go underneath there. Spend a minute just making sure. If you put your finger underneath, you can really push down. Because once you're happy with where that sits, pretty happy. Yeah, that's good. But now you can see that moves really freely and you've got this decorative little yeah, fastening. So I'm going to do the same with this one here. Okay, so they're all now secure. And then lastly, you just want to add your ribbon through. And that's why I just thought these are perfect. So I'm going to thread one through there. And I will link in these hooks as well. Because if there's anybody there who's, you know, can't get to the shops and wants to buy online, then, yeah, they'll be easy to find, I would have thought. So you want to bring it, you want enough to be able to kind of make a nice bow. But then you also want this piece here is going to start to create your handle. So I think that's about okay. I think I've done the other one a bit higher. Then you thread the same piece through there. So I'm just going to use my stylus here just to feed that through and again when you bring it through you want to make sure that you've got them together now that's not enough to make my bow so what I need to do is thread more through this side and then I can pull this through so you just want to make sure you've got an even amount Ooh. kind of sticking out and you've got a nice handle. I could probably shorten my handle a little bit. I think that's about right. And then I'm going to just tie that off in a knot and tie a nice bow. And there you have it, a really cute gift bag. I absolutely adore this. I think it's stunning and I just love the bow there. You don't have to have a bow. You could knot it off if you want to. You could have the bow at the top there and you could have a bow on both sides it's entirely up to you but yeah i think they're gorgeous and i can't wait to give them to people and there's the other one there so yeah i think they're great <laughs> so i hope you like them too as always if you have please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more great projects like this thanks for watching bye <laughs>